الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن سار على سبيله إلى يوم الدين أما بعد سوتدين شاء تعالى وبكنتين our lesson in المصطلح and still discussing the book التذكرة في علوم الحديث by Ibn Malakin رحمه الله so as for today شاء تعالى we'll be discussing a few more of the points that he covers regarding knowing the مصطلحات of علم ال of علم الحديث so today, insha'Allah, Taala, we hope to cover concerning what he discussed concerning an nasiq wal mansuq and also as Sahaba wa Tabi'in. So as for the first of those topics, that is regarding matters relating to an nasiq wal mansuq. So this of those topics that covers that is mentioned within the books of Hadith regarding that the person who is studying of Hadith that they are aware regarding of those cases regarding those things that said to be uh, abrogation that occurs regard within the, the Sunnah. So the author, Rahimallah Ibn Malakin, Rahimallah in his book, Tadkira fi Ulum al-Hadith, that he mentioned the next point by stating, وَمَرْفَتُ نَاسِقْ نَاسِقِ وَمَنْسُوخِ So he mentioned regarding of those points that he covered in this book, that he mentioned, وَمَرْفَتُ نَاسِقِهِ وَمَنْسُوخِ So that person also knowing regarding those matters that relates to this particular topic regarding Nasik wal Mansuk fil Hadith. So regarding concerning expanding a little more on this particular topic that the author Rahimullah he mentioned regarding an Nasik wal Mansuk. So this discussion will cover concerning three mustalahat that are used within this particular discussion. The first being an an Nasq, which is concerning the act, and also an Nasik wal Mansuk. So as for an Nasq, that means concerning Nasakh Nasakha that it means concerning izala. So linguistically it means al izala or it means concerning naqal where something is mo uh, uh, removed or something which is as mentioned izala it is taken away. So regarding concerning what is meant according to the ulama of hadith regarding an nasik wal mansuk or regarding an nasq what they mean concerning this concern uh, what they mean concerning that uh, they mention raf al sharih hukman minhu mutaqaddiman بِحُكْمٌ مِنْهُ مُتَأَخِّرًا So what they mention regarding, what is mentioned regarding concern is act concerning an nasq it is رَفَ الْأَشَارِعِ الْحُكُمْ Where the shari' the legislator, have removed a hukum, a judgment that was previously passed, that was earlier passed by a new ruling that came later on. So that's concerning what is meant by an nasq where the, the ruling that was previously made that the Shari who made this ruling also have removed or replaced that ruling with a separate, with a different ruling that came later on. So that's concerning an uh, an nasq. So as concerning nasq wal mansuq, regarding concerning an nasq, which concerning ism al fa'il, that can somewhat the ulama of Adi they uh, explain concerning an nasq, kullu hadithin dalla ala rafi. حكم الشرع ثابت من حديث السابق. So what is meant by a nasq or nasq where I mention كل حديث دلت على رفع. We're concerning that حكم where that حكم have been removed. So every حديث where the حكم have been replaced by the Sharia by the Sharia the legislator by a ruling that came later. That's concerning what is meant by a nasq. So generally concerning the person. And also Mansuq is the previous ruling. So regarding concerning Mansuq, كل حديث رفيا حكمه. So and Mansuq is every hadith where its ruling has been replaced by the Shari. So every ruling has been replaced, then it refer to as Mansuq. And the one where the person now act upon is referred to as an Nasik. Is the one that have been have taken that judge have now taken that new place. So that's concerning what is discussed regarding uh, an Nasik. And what is mentioned here, Nasik wal Mansuq. As for those matters that relate to this particular topic regarding an nasq wa nasq wal mansuq, where the ulama rahimullah have somewhat explained further of those things that they mention. One, the importance of this science, and knowing of this science, and also the person that uh, he, he reviewed that uh, the person have knowledge of this matter. So they mentioned regarding concern that Imam Shafi rahimullah, it is said regarding Imam Shafi rahimullah that he placed a lot of emphasis on this matter. It is stated by Ahmed ibn Hamdul rahimahullah. That he mentioned to a person called Ibn uh, Rawrad, that he mentioned to him concerning that he mentioned when this person came to Misr. Fakal, Katabta Kutub al Shafi, did you record the books of Shafi? Rahimahullah, Qal, La. The person said, No. Fakal Ahmed Rahimullah, Faradta. 
that you have somewhat become neglectful, you are negligent. Then he mentioned, Imam Sha uh, Ahmed Rahimu Qal, Ma alimna al mujmal min al mufassir wa nasik al hadith wa mansukhi hatta jalasna al shafihi rahimahullah. So Ahmed Rahimu Qal, he mentioned that we were not uh, aware of this matter was made clear to us regarding mujmal wal mufassir regarding al nasik al hadith wa mansukhi. Hatta until that we sat with Imam Shafi Rahimahullah. So Imam Shafi Rahimahullah of those who place a lot of emphasis on this matter and discuss it in his book al risala Also regarding this matter which is next, the second matter regarding an nasik al mansuk is the person knowing how does one come about identifying regarding hadith being falling into this category of nasik al mansuk How does one go about knowing this? The ulama Rahimahullah regarding a person uh, coming to know of this and having knowledge of this, that one, there's methods. So a different, different method of the person being able to can identify that the hadith fall into nasik al mansuk First that they mention one of those ways is regarding concerning uh, an nas as sariya min al-sunnah, where you find a clear text coming from the sunnah on this particular matter. Where you find the Prophet salam, the Messenger of Allah salam, that he himself spoke about this matter and clarified this matter. Example of this first case, where he alayhi salam have clarified that the hadith, the ruling have been uh, removed, where he mentioned the hadith of Burayda, right ala anhu, qal qal rasul alayhi salam, qal, kuntu naitukum an ziyatul qubur, that before I forbade you from visiting the graveyard, then he mentioned, fazuruha, that now you can visit them. Then it answers uh, al-hadith. So that hadith, it shows regarding that initially, it was forbidden for the Muslim to visit the graveyard, then after he alayhi salam, then he allowed them to do so, as he mentioned, to that kirkum bil maut, as it reminds you of that, kama qad alayhi wa salam. So that hadith, that uh, mention regarding concerning, that uh, of those cases where he alayhi salam first uh, passed a particular judgment, which was not to visit the graveyard, then later on he allowed this. So the, uh, the ruling before was now removed. A second way of being, of identifying and knowing regarding Nasik al Mansuk is by way of Khabr al Sahaba, is regarding concerning statements or narration from the Sahaba. So, narration from the Sahaba on this matter, that as mentioned the hadith of uh, Jabir, where they mention, Kana akhir amrayni of the last of the two of the two affairs, min Rasul al Rasul alayhi salam from the Prophet of Mr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Tarak al Wudu, Mimman Masat al Nar, that of the last of the final matter was upon from the Mr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that for a person who met, uh, ate from something that was cooked by nar for him not to make wudu. So that's concerning the matter on this topic uh, and this hadith narrated in the Ashabu Sunan and others. Where and now Rahimullah uh, and mentioned some of the hadith mentioned Masat and nar or some mentioned Ghayrat bin nar. So you have various narration on this particular hadith. So that's from the hadith it shows regarding of those matters that he alayhi salam First, regarding concerning if one ate from meat that was cooked by fire or roasted, then he alayhi salam, one, were, one had to perform a wudu. Then after that was removed. A second hadith on the same topic regarding al-Khabar bin Sahab, anhum, the hadith of Abu uh, Ubay ibn Kaab, the hadith of Ubay ibn Kaab, where he mentioned, Kana al-ma min al-ma, rukhsatun fi awl islam, thumma amr bil ghusl, where Ubay ibn Kaab, he mentioned that initially, that alma min alma, that the person had any form of uh, relationship with their wives, then it was allowed for the person, if he did not have any discharge, then for the person to uh, not perform ghusl. Then after that was changed. Then later on, this was changed where if the person had any form of uh, intimacy, then the person, whether they had a discharge or not, then the person had to made ghusl. So that's concerning. So those are the, the athar from the Sahaba the khabar from the Sahaba, that indicate that this matter was such and such initially, then later on it was changed. The third of those methods in identifying regarding Nasuk al mansukh at tarikh So of those methods is person knowing concerning uh, the history of those hadith, regarding which came first and which came after. So from that concern that the matter, that you find that, uh, that matter you find sometimes regarding of the tarikh where the person have to be clear regarding which came first and which came second. And if both of them, uh, and regarding uh, the, the second, would abrogate the first.
the, first, the second would abrogate the first soul, knowing of the tariq is one of the ways of doing this. And you have different, different cases that are mentioned regarding this. Then another method, a mention of a fourth method that the ulama rahimahullah that mentioned concerning the dhalat uh, al-ijma. We're concerning that term, uh, an indication of, uh, of ijma. So an indicator being ijma. So an indicator being ijma. Where they mention regarding concerning that, of that matter, for example, where they mention regarding concerning that, uh, the ulama mentioned concerning uh, al-ijma on this particular matter. So regarding concerning case of ijma, then a person need to verify that the ijma, this consensus of, of the ulama, it is something which is valid. So it's a concern. So first identifying that this ijma, it is that which is authentic, it is valid. So this also is used as a indicator regarding a nasik wal mansubigar, a matter being abrogated. So those are of those ways that one can identify regarding matters regarding uh, a nasik wal mansuk. Uh, Ibn Kathir rahimullah, when he discussed concerning in his ikhtisar of uh, the book of Ibn Salah, that uh, he mentioned regarding that this matter regarding a nasik wal mansuk, mansuk, that this matter is mentioned or a, mat a topic which is shared between the ulama of hadith and also the ulama of usul and usul al fiqh. So the ulama regarding al usul al fiqh and the fuqaha, they also discuss this matter and also the ulama of the Quran. So in various science, that this matter is somewhat shared between the various science. The ulama of tafsir also uh, put emphasis on this matter regarding al nasik al mansuq by way of the Quran and by way of the Sunnah. And also you find the ulama of the fuqaha and the usuliyin also discuss this matter regarding nasik al mansuq as it affects rulings and also third, the ulama of hadith that also discuss this particular topic regarding nasik al mansuq. Uh, so the ulama of hadith more specialized or more discuss more in detail nasik al mansuq by way of hadith. Not that they neglect concerning matters regarding the Qur'an, but more so they look as to the ahadith that also cover this particular topic. So regarding concern this matter, matter go back to what Ibn Kathir rahimahullah, he mentioned regarding that this matter also, it is ashba min ilm al-usul al-fiqh. That this, is, this matter is more befitting regarding the discussion in the, in the matter concerning ilm al-usul al-fiqh. But as we mentioned, and as the ulama rahimahullah have clarified, that this is a matter which is mushtarik a discussion that is shared between the various science regarding being able to identify regarding nasik al mansuq because this matter affects concerning matters regarding certain rulings in Islam where matter, the ruling was such initially then it was changed so the person need to know which is the final uh, judgment and next matter regarding a nasik al mansuq that ulama rahimahullah have covered or discussed does the person before he act upon a hadith does the person need to investigate and research, does this, this hadith fall into nasik al mansuq before he can act and apply this hadith? The ulama rahimahullah uh, answered by saying, it's not the case uh, until it has been made known to him. So the person act upon what he knows of a hadith that is authentic, but uh, until it has been made clear to him that this matter fall on the nasik al mansuq of that being abrogated. And then on that matter, they discuss concerning this, uh, this matter, that Ulama mentioned that not many hadith fall into this. Not many hadith fall into this category concerning ruling. So it's not more than, not many a hadith that will fall into this category of, of an nasik al mansukh Finally, regarding this particular matter, regarding an nasik al mansukh books that cover this particular topic. So the Ulama, rahimullah, of hadith, of authored books that uh, spe uh, specific regarding a hadith, that relates to Nasik al Mansukh. So, of those concerning the more renowned of those books that have covered this particular topic, that they mention one, a book that is called Al Ittibar. Al Ittibar fi Nasik al Mansukh. Min al Athar. So, the book that is more of the more uh, comprehensive of those books that cover this particular topic is the book that is titled Al Ittibar fi Nasik al Mansukh. Min al Athar. And this book is written by Imam Abu Bakr Muhammad ibn Musa al-Hazimi. Abu Bakr Muhammad ibn Musa al-Hazimi rahimahullah who died the year uh, 584 al-Hijri. And uh, this is a book that is considered to be now the more uh, authoritative book on this particular topic. And this is this book. And this is the book. So this is the book Al-Itibar by al-Hazimi rahimahullah on the topic regarding al nasik al-Mansuq. Another book on this particular topic is uh, the book, another book 
is this particular book that is in by Ibn al Jawzi rahimahullah. So this is the book of Ibn Jawzi on this particular topic. And uh, this book is called Alam al Alim. Bad al Rusuhi bi haqaiq nasik al hadith wa mansuhi. And this is the book by Ibn al Jawzi rahimahullah. So this book is Ibn Jawzi, which is died here. 597. So this is a flow of those books that cover this particular uh, topic. And uh, the third of those books on this topic is the book al nasik al-Mansuq al nasik al-Mansuq min al-Hadith al nasik al-Mansuq min al-Hadith and this is the book that is written by Ibn Shaheen Ibn Shaheen who is Abu Hafs Umar ibn Ahmed ibn Shaheen who wrote this particular book on this particular topic and he died of the early ones who written on this topic he died 385 he died the year 385 al hijri so it's concerning of those books that are on this particular uh, topic and you have different tahqiq of this book uh, there's a second print of this book which is the same book of uh, ibn Shaheen a second print uh, but on the, the same topic so these are uh, some of those works that covers concerning and Nasik al Mansuk by way of hadith mainly. Uh, you have other books that are more uh, broader regarding and Nasik al Mansuk regarding concerning Quran and the likes. But these books spe specialize more so on the topic of Nasik al Mansuk min hadith. That's concerning that particular uh, discussion. So that's concerning uh, what would be covered regarding and Nasik al Mansuk as mentioned by Ibn Malakin Rahimallah in his book at Tazkira. The second thing that will go into the second point that he mentioned here, that he mentioned concerning Marfatu as Sahaba. So the next matter that he covers after An Nasuk al Mansukh, that he cover concerning matters that relates to as Sahaba. So he mentioned knowing the Sahaba. So the ulama of Hadith Rahimahullah in their books of Mustalah, Ulum al Hadith, also they discuss this particular topic, which is knowing the Sahaba and the importance concerning uh, some matters relating to the, the Sahaba. So on this matter regarding the Sahaba, we can, we'll cover regarding uh, some points that relates to the Sahaba. Uh, of those matters regarding concerning the Sahaba, that uh, we'll cover regarding the ident uh, who's the Sahaba by way of definition. So I then uh, covering concerning, defining concerning who's the Sahaba and other topics. So regarding concerning this matter regarding a sahaba that uh, linguistically the word sahaba or sahabi being the singular and sahabiya being the female of the monks of sahaba that uh, the asl of the word comes from uh, suhaba or from sahiba so the word sahiba is the asl of the word regarding a saha the word that goes back to this word and it means concerning that uh, regarding concerning that having companionship so regarding concerning sahiba regarding companion so as for the word istilahan sahaba with the ulama hadith that uh, they mention regarding you have various definitions that are there several definitions regarding who's a sahabi as for who's mentioned as a sahabi of the more renowned and uh, more widely used accepted Definition of Sahaba that they mention Man lak Nabi Ali Islam Mu'minan bihi Wa mata ala Islam So that's concern of those definition and the more that established definition of Sahaba that they mention Man lak Nabi Ali Islam The one who have met the Prophet Ali Islam Mu'minan bihi and believed in him and third Mata al Islam, and that person he died upon Islam. So that is what is said to be or defined as a Sahabi, the one who fulfilled these criteria. Then they are said to be a Sahabi, the one who met the Prophet alayhi salam, mu'minan bihi, and that person believed in him as being a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while he was alive. And third, that that person also he died eventually upon Islam. So that is the person who fulfilled these criteria, these conditions that they are said to be a Sahabi. So as for the meaning concern that we mentioned, as mentioned by the ulama, and that is definition by given by Ibn Hajar rahimahullah. Other definition that I mentioned, that they mentioned, another wording, man raha, the man raha, the person who have saw the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or seen the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mu'minan bihi wa mata ala islam, and the person also died upon Islam. That's a second, another definition that is given regarding a Sahabi. But they mentioned that the more 
precise, a more precise definition. The using the word man lakia, using the word ummet, the Prophet al Islam, not necessarily the personal, uh, not per se, using the word the one who ra'a, the one who have seen the Prophet al Islam. So regarding concerning what is uh, uh, the Sahabi, that the person must fulfill those three conditions. The one who met the Prophet Islam, and they mentioned regarding that meeting the Prophet Islam, that they mentioned where the person sat with him for years, where the person only minutes, a short period of time, the one who was uh, sat with him, the person who saw him but didn't directly met him, but he saw him from a distance, but did not communicate or sat with the Prophet Islam, is also included as Sahabi. Also, the person was a youngster that the Prophet Islam met him and the person saw him. So those are all said to be a Sahabi. Anyone who met the Prophet Islam, then he said to be a Sahabi. But the person who met him was blind or he saw him. So in all those cases, he said to be a Sahabi based upon that first condition. So fulfilling that first condition. The second, that the person also, Mu'min and Bihi, he must believe in him as being a master of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the master that he brought of Islam. So the person who met him, also, that person must believe in him as being a master of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the second condition. So the person who met him, but did not believe in him, -Islam, the Prophet al -Islam, then that person is not included in the Sahabi because he did not believe in him. And the third is that person who died upon Islam, the person eventually, he died as a Muslim. So anyone who fulfilled those three conditions, he said to be a Sahabi, the one who met him, the Prophet al -Islam, believe in him and his message of Islam. And third, that person, he died as a Muslim. That is the one who said to be a Sahabi. Then the ulama, rahimahullah, they discuss concerning that the importance of knowing concerning who is a Sahabi. As we mentioned before, that regarding hadith, that of an aspect of the studying of hadith is known concerning matter that relates to Isnad. So regarding concerning the Sahabi, they are said to be a part of the Isnad, of the Hadith. They are said they are, they are included in a part of the Isnad. So they are, part, they, are, they are the ones who directly met the Prophet of the Islam and narrated about him directly. So, without, so they are part of the narration. So without them being present in the Hadith, also then it has some deficiency. It has some deficiency of being one which is said to be not Musnad. It's not a complete chain. So that's concerning the importance of knowing concerning the Sahabi. So for the Hadith to be Musnad, Mutasil, it requires that a Sahabi also is present. Also of those matters that relate to concerning uh, the Sahaba that the ulama, rahimahullah, they discuss is regarding the rank and the position of the Sahaba. So the Sahaba, Rata ala anhum, they are considered to be amongst ulama, uh, amongst al sunnah, they are all, said, they are all considered to be udul. They are all said to be udul, meaning concerning the Sahabi, that they are not to be, they are not uh, judged and criticized as would be the case of any ordinary narrator. So they have a certain ranking, status, place for being a Sahabi. And if a person is said to be a Sahabi, then he would not be scrutinized. Is adala is naturally given, his credibility is naturally given to him by being a Sahabi, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appraised them, and also the Prophet Islam appraised them. So if those people have been praised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also the Prophet Islam have praised them, then the ulama see not the need also to critique them per se. But this concerning their adala regarding their deen and their credibility. It does not negate that the Sahaba does not make errors. So it does not conform isma, infallibility to the Sahaba. It just acknowledge and confirm their credibility, but not per se, but it doesn't confirm regarding them being said one who are ma'asum, who are infallible. So that's concerning that difference. And regarding concerning the adal of the Sahaba, their trustworthiness, their credibility, their standing, there's something which is Proven by way of Quran, wa sunnah, wa ijma. Quran, wa sunnah, wa ijma. And this rule applies to all the Sahaba. 
So regarding concerning al-ijma, regarding adalat al sahaba Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned his book by stating of, the, of that concerning وَالسَّابِكُونَ الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين تبعوهم بالإحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عن الآية. So Allah subhanahu wa taala mentions Surah Al-Baqarah verse one hundred regarding السابكون الأولون that those who are the the foremost and those who were of the the ones who preceded foremost amongst the muhajirin والأنصار amongst those who are said to be the muhajir والأنصار and those are the Sahaba from those who muhajir. Those who migrated from Mecca to Medina, they are called the Muhajir. And also Ansar is referred to those among the Sahaba who were the one who aided those who came, who made the migration to Medina. Then I mention, and those who follow them, they mention with Ihsan in goodness, radiallahu anhum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, and they are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he showed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are is pleased with the Sahaba from the Muhajirin or Ansar. So they shows regarding that they have a standing in Islam. By way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praising them and indicating that Allah that he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them. Then also you find other texts regarding that particular uh, matter uh, regarding concerning uh, the Sahaba. So uh, and also mentioned by subhanahu wa ta'ala Kazalik Jalnakum Ummatan Wasata. Allah Subhanahu mentioned concerning that, and, th and by this, we have placed you as being a ummah, a nation, which is wasata, which is udul. So the ulama rahim of Tasir mentioned regarding, uh, as mentioned by Ibn Abi Hatim and others regarding, that uh, udul, uh, al-wasata, meaning udul, that they are those who are said to be of those of credibility and trustworthiness and standing. So that's concerning being, and the first amongst those are the sahaba from this ummah as being those who fulfill this criteria. So regarding concerning this matter, that we find uh, many texts regarding uh, the adal of the Sahaba and also from the Sunnah, we are here as they mentioned regarding khairul nas qarni, that the best of this nation are those of my generation. So I al Islam have uh, praised his generation and mentioned their credibility. And also you find many of the ulama have stated an ijma on this topic. So you find that the ijma on the topic regarding the adala, the credibility of the Sahaba, as mentioned of those who have mentioned ijma on this particular ma uh, matter, that you have Ibn Abdul Bar Rahimullah have mentioned ijma and ijma on this topic, and also Ibn Salah and others, and Nawawi and others, who have mentioned regarding that the ijma amongst Al Islam, Al Sunnah, regarding the credibility of the, the Sahaba. Uh, as mentioned, uh, So that's concerning that Ibn Salah Rahimullah have mentioned regarding Al-Ummah Mujtama'un ala ta'adil jami'a sahaba That is Ummah are in agreement in a, of a consensus regarding the credibility of all the sahaba So this applies to all the sahaba After this matter regarding the credibility of the sahaba meaning that no one is to attack the credibility of the sahaba then uh, the next matter discussed concerning uh, with the Sahaba concerning that of those topics regarding the Sahaba is knowing from the Sahaba they are different different tabakat. So the Sahaba and different different levels of those levels regarding concerning that the ulama put them different different levels levels regarding the Sahaba. And will uh, of those the Sahaba that uh, on various different levels regarding those who are foremost as well mentioned. But before this they mention regarding that Aktar Sahaba Hadithan. So relating to Sahaba regarding Hadith, the name of those matter is regarding amongst the Sahaba, they are those who are the ones who have narrated many Hadith, over a thousand and more. So they mention regarding those Sahaba, they are constant Aktar Sahaba Hadithan, the Sahabas, or the Sahabas who have mentioned mo many Hadith, amongst those we find seven. Amongst those who are known to be the ones who have nar narrated uh, Many hadith we find amongst those are seven. One, the first, Abu Rayyat al Anahu. Second, Abdullah ibn Umar. Third, Anas ibn Malik. Fourth, Aisha Umm al Mu'minin. Fifth, Abdullah ibn Abbas. Sixth, Jabir ibn Abdullah. And seventh, Abu Sa'id al Khudri. Rata ala anhum ejma'in. 
So those amongst the seven of the companions who have narrated many hadith, many in the sense of over a thousand hadith. So they fall into the category of Kasahaba, the seven that they have narrated over in over a thousand hadith. So that's concerning those who are said to be uh, the Sahaba na na Akthar Riwayatan among the Sahaba, those who have narrated most or many narration. Then uh, that's concerning those seven, a second group of Sahaba that sends the Akthar Sahaba, Futia, those among the Sahaba who, have uh, who are known to be the ones who have uh, given past judgments the most. Amongst those that they mentioned regarding of the Sahaba who have many judgments on things, we have, they mentioned Abdullah ibn Abbas. Abdullah ibn Abbas, of those who, regarding giving judgment, passing judgment, then is of those of the Sahaba that have passed many judgments. Amongst uh, the more, uh, among the Sahaba, also those who fall into this category regarding uh, Muktirin, who have passed many judgments. We have Umar ibn Khattab, Sek, amongst them also Ali ibn Abi Talib, as we mentioned also Abdullah ibn Umar, also Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, also amongst them Zayd ibn Thabit, also amongst them Aisha Rata al Anha, Umm al Mu'mineen, they are amongst the Sahaba regarding Muqthirin min al Futya, regarding those who have, not, uh, have passed many judgments. And uh, you have different, different levels regarding this. Then, regarding concerning that uh, among the Sahaba, among the Ulama of Hadith, that they have categorized certain Sahaba calling, uh, they have certain that, that are given in concerning uh, Abadila, Abadila among the Sahaba. So you have those Sahaba, they have Abadila among the Sahaba. So these Abadila among the Sahaba, meaning concerning those Sahaba that are referred to as the Abdullah. But these are concerning, you find many companions over 500 Sahaba of the name Abdullah. So you have over 500 Sahaba who have the name Abdullah. But you have a special group that refer, that are referred to as Ibadillah. And these are those companions that I mentioned regarding that. Four among the companions who are referred to as such, as Ibadillah. And these are the four that said to be the more young of the Sahaba who died later on. So these are more young of the Sahaba who have given this particular uh, title. Amongst them, of these Sahaba that are referred to as such, Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Zubir, and Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As. So these Sahaba, these four, are referred to as Abadila min al Sahaba. Abadila min al Sahaba. Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Zubir, and Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As. These four are referred to as such, uh, are given this laqab, this title, amongst the Aba as they died later on, and also they became, during the, uh, uh, later on, they become a reference regarding Islam, being of the younger Sahaba who still uh, lived on after the death of many of the oldest uh, Sahabi. Also, the next matter regarding Sahaba, other the Sahaba. How many Sahabas were there? This matter, you find a discussion between the ulama regarding trying to identify or to put a number regarding how many Sahaba they were. So you find that uh, various numbers have been given that they mention over uh, uh, thousands of Sahaba, over a hundred thousand Sahaba that are mentioned amongst this number. But that ta'adid needs to be looked into further. Uh, there's no uh, specific clear num uh, regarding concerning that to specify a particular number, then this concerning that is a discussion between the ulama. But there were many amongst the companions. Uh, as for the next matter regarding a sahabi uh, that they mentioned, the tabakat of the sahaba, the different tabakat of the sahaba. So the sahaba, they're not in one tabakat. And as we mentioned, that uh, of uh, the sahaba, that uh, they put concerning the tabakat of the sahaba and various tabakat, of uh, those that they mentioned amongst the other uh, Imam Muslim, you have different different tabakat regarding all the ulama of categorized concerning the Sahaba. Uh, of those ones regarding concerning that, of the, of the tabakat of the Sahaba, so you find that uh, Al Hakim have uh, placed them in uh, in his book, Ma'rifat Ulum al Hadith, under 12 categories. Al Hakim placed them in 12. Uh, 
جالهم different different طبقات. He placed them into twelve categories. For example, Ibn Saad he placed them into five categories, and others placed them into different. See, have different different ways that they put them in different طبقات. As for concerning that, so as concerning the طبقات was have on different different طبقات. As for the أفضل صحابة. The Afdal of the Liyah that they mention regarding of the Afdal of the Sahaba, the best of the Sahaba, the best of the Sahaba. First, Abu Bakr Siddiq. Second, Omar ibn Khattab. Third, Uthman ibn Affan. And fourth, Ali ibn Abi Talib. So that's concerning what have been established. So you find an ijma regarding Abu Bakr or Uthman, and that's unchallenged. Then regarding what has been established is that Uthman is third. And Ali ibn Talib is the fourth. And that's now what had been established by Ali Sunnah in that order. Abu Bakr, Thumma Umar, then Uthman, then Ali. This order established between Ali Sunnah uh, regarding that tartib. They do not, and there's no uh, discussion regarding the first being Abu Bakr, then next Umar. Then at times earlier, there was a discussion regarding Uthman. And Ali, but then it was established with this order regarding Uthman then Ali. That's concerning what have been agreed upon between Ayl Sunnah. Then regarding concerning that, uh, then after them you find that in concerning of the more uh, uh, renown of the Sahaba, we have concerning Al Ashar Mubashir Mubashirin bil Jannah, those ten who were given glad tidings of Jannah. Then we have concerning Ayl al Badr. Then we have Ayl Uhud. Then we have concerning Ayl al-Bay, al-Ridwan, and such manner. So you find then after, so you find concerning that the tabakah of the Sahaba they varies accordingly. Those concerning the early ones who accept, then the ones who came after. So of those one, al-Ashr mubashirin bil Jannah, those were the ten who were giving glad tidings of Jannah. They are on the top of the list. Then those who of Ayl al-Badr, after them, and as we and the ulama mentioned Ayl al-Uhud, after them, then. Ayl al-Ridwan, Bi'at al-Ridwan comes after them and in that fashion. Then I discuss concerning who are the first among the Sahaba to accept Islam. Who are the first among the Sahaba to accept Islam? The ulama rahimahullah have somewhat categorized them accordingly. Amongst the male, Ahra, free men, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. Amongst the first, amongst the Nisa, female to accept Islam, amongst the female, Khadija. Bint Khawailid, Umm al-Mu'mineen, Rata al-Anha. Amongst the first, amongst the Sibyan, the youngsters to accept Islam, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Amongst the first, amongst the Mawali to accept Islam, Zayd ibn Haritha. And amongst, concerning the, uh, uh, the Abid, Bilal ibn Rabah. So those are with the ulama, rahimullah, have somewhat of uh, categorized those who are classed as the first amongst those to accept Islam, as we had outlined. Then I discuss concerning, a next matter concerning, who are the first amongst the, 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 the last amongst the Sahaba to have died? Who are the Sahabis who died last? The ulama rahimahullah, they mentioned regarding al itlaq the Sahaba who have died, uh, the last among the Sahaba to have died is Abu Tufail Amir ibn Wathila al Laythi. So that's concerning Amir ibn Wathila al Laythi, the last among the Sahabi to have died, and he died in Mecca. He died in Mecca. Uh, and they disagree regarding exactly at what time that he died. They mention after Al Mi al Hijri. Mi al Hijri, that he died Qil after this. So concerning what they agree upon or what they are inclined towards is that Abu Tufail. Is the last among the Sahaba to have died. Then regarding concerning that with the Sahaba, you have concerning which books, uh, books that are there also can someone to identify who are the Sahaba. Books that identify who are the Sahaba or discuss concerning books that relate to Sahaba. So you find that books that relate to Sahaba by way of giving a, uh, a biography of the Sahaba uh, and amongst those books. And also you have books that have been written regarding to mention concerning the Fadail the virtue of the Sahaba. So of those books that I've discussed concerning the virtue of the Sahaba, you have the book concerning the book of Fadal al-Sahaba, 
by Ahmed ibn Hanbal rahimahullah. So Ahmed ibn Hanbal rahimahullah, that he wrote a book, Fadal al-Sahaba, and that book is in print, with the taqiq of Sheikh Wasi Allah, Abbasi, Hafid Allah, Tabarak ta'ala. Then uh, of those books that dedicate to giving us some biography of the Sahaba, <coughs> regarding concerning of those books, Al-Istiyab fi marafat al-Sahaba, ma'atu marat al-Ashab. And that book is written by Yusuf ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Bar. Yusuf ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Bar. Abdul Bar rahimahullah, one of the ulama who died in the year 462. That year, 462 Al Hijri. So he wrote many books. And of those books that he wrote concerning a book relating to the Sahaba, which is Al Istiyab fi Marfa Ashab. And that book is in print. And uh, his method is concerned that he put the, uh, cat, uh, that he mentioned Sahaba based upon huruf al, uh, al mujam So based upon each letter of the alphabet, Alif, those Sahaba, Ba, of those with that name, until the end, first he started with men, then after he went until, onto Al-Female. Uh, and that book, that uh, it mentioned over 4,000 Sahaba. So that book mentioned over 4,000 Sahaba in that particular book. A second book that is written regarding the Sahaba, a book called Usul al Ghaba. Usul al Ghaba fi Marfati al Sahaba. Usul al Ghaba fi Marfati al Sahaba. And this book is written by Izzi al Din Ali ibn Muhammad ibn uh, Muhammad al Jazari, more so known as Ibn Athir. So Ibn Athir, Rahimullah, also wrote a book together where he compiled regarding those who wrote before, compiled all those books and wrote a book on this particular uh, under the Sahaba, which is Usul al-Ghaba. And uh, Ibn Athir, Rahimullah, he died the year uh, 630. He died the year 630 Al-Hijri. Also, his book is written based upon Huruf al-Mu'ajam. So it's upon the letters of the alphabet, of the Arabic alphabet, that he put them, the Sahaba, based upon the, the letters that comes in the alphabet. And first with the male, then when he compete with the male, then he discussed concerning uh, female. Uh, that particular number of hadith, our Sahabat is covered over 7,000, close to 8,000 uh, close to 8,000 Sahabi mentioned in that book, over close to uh, 8,000, over 70,000 plus. The third book, that also important book and the more uh, comprehensive book on this topic, the most comprehensive book regarding the Sahaba is the book that is called Isaba fi Tamiz as Sahaba. Al Isaba. Fi Tamiz al Sahaba, and this book is written by Ahmed ibn Ali ibn Hajj al Asqalani. So, this book is written by Ibn Hajj al Asqalani, rahimahullah, and that we know he died the year 852. So, Ibn Hajj al Rahimullah, that uh, many works that he had in Hadith, amongst those works, is a very comprehensive book regarding al Sahaba. So, Ibn Hajj al Rahimullah, in his book Al Isaba, that he can somewhat ratib al Huruf, that also he started with the men, and it is also structured in a way that each according to huruf al al mujam that uh, according to the letters of the Arabic alphabet uh, that he mentioned concerning al female, but also he put them into four categories. First, he mentioned concerning man waradat suhba tuhu bi tariq al riwaya, those who their uh, suhba is known by riwaya. Then he mentioned al atfal al ladina ulidu al ahd nabi nabi al islam that concerning children. Then he mentioned. Mukhadramun, those who can somewhat Mukhadramun are those who they accepted Islam in, ta after ta uh, in a time of Prophet after Islam, but did not meet him. They were first as Mukhadramun. That so he mentioned those people Adrak al Jahiliya wal Islam. Walam, that it is not known that they met the Prophet al Islam. So those are called Mukhadramun. Then he mentioned fourth Man Dukura min Kutubu Sahaba ala Sabil Waham. Then he mentioned the fourth those who are mentioned amongst the Sahaba but by way of error. So those people are mentioned at times as being a Sahabi, but this is by way of an error that they are. So he can somewhat discuss concerning those cases. So those concerning matters that relate to Sahaba. So that's concerning in brief regarding matters that relate to Sahaba. So those are the things that are, are covered. So that's concerning the matter regarding Sahaba due to the time that uh, will bring things to an end. And we discuss concerning at tabiin in the next uh, liqa. Wa billahi ta'ala tawfiq. وهذه إلى السبيل والآخر دعوان حمد الرمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته